Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So, a couple of days ago, I had a student who got a job as a quality information analyst here in the UK. And she, you know, she has been in the UK for about two years now on the health and care visa. So, she came in as an health care worker. And, you know, when she joined the tech drive training, she was able to, you know, build up the required technical skills. You know, we worked on the CV and, you know, she went for a couple of interviews, of course, filled some of those interviews and, Eventually, a few days ago, she landed a quality information analyst job here in the UK with visa sponsorship. And one of the major questions she has been asking or she has been a little bit bothered about is now that she's switching from the health and care visa to the um, skilled worker visa, what will happen to the two years she has spent on the health and care visa? Will, will this count on, you know, towards a five-year settlement um, to getting her indefinite leave to remain? Now, this is one of many people who have asked this question in the last, you know, couple of weeks. And this is, this is because so many people are beginning to get, like, professional jobs outside the health and care space. And they're a little bit bothered at the time they spent on their, you know, um, on their previous work visa will not count towards their indefinite leave to remain, the five years route. Which is what I'll be talking about in details in this video. And if you're looking at switching from the health and care visa to a new visa category, then you sure do want to stick to this video till the end and if you're coming across this channel for the first time do also hit on the subscribe button to join the amazing going family so without further ado let's get right into the video before i get right into the video i'd like to give a special shout out to the sponsor of this video tech drive now are you looking at transitioning into data analytics and you're looking for data related roles with visa sponsorship you're looking for roles as you know um, a data analyst a marketing analyst sales analyst finance analyst just to mention a few that you want to check out tech drive now tech drive organizing a new course starting on the 25th of november 2024 and some of the things that comes with the training is you're going to be building up your technical skills in advanced excel functions to vba and macro level you're going to be trained on how to create etl pipelines using ssis um, interrogate and manipulate data on sql and ultimately creating business intelligence report on power bi so if you want to learn all of this they should want to check out tech drive now also in the course of the training your cv will be worked on so you're going to be working your cv you're going to be getting uk work experience on your cv with appropriate references um to back up the work um, reference and ultimately you'll be creating a master portfolio to showcase all the skill sets you've got to potential employers and recruiters and most importantly you get mentored by those who are currently working as data analysts here in the United Kingdom. How good does that sound? So if you want to learn more about this, please send an email to techdrive 6 gmailcom or check out their website at www.techdriveuk.com and get all the details you might need to learn more about um, getting into this training with TechDrive. Don't forget, there's a new course starting on the 25th of November and there are limited slots available for this course. So if you'd like to learn more, send that email, check out their website, and get all the details trust me you will be glad that you did so back to those who have been asking this question to be honest with you i was really really glad when this student of mine um you know got this offer like this has been uh, you know um a very emotional couple of months for her because where she works or you know the sponsor has not really been getting enough work for her so she hasn't really been working she hasn't been making enough money to sort her bills and she decided to give it you know give a chance to learning data which you know eventually paid off for her and you know she was really worried and i felt okay um just like the fact that you know a lot of information has been passed across this whole uh indefinite leave to remain thing um so many people are still very confused and i'm just going to give the answer to this question in one sentence if you're currently on a work visa and you're moving to a different work visa this does not affect your indefinite leave to remain i mean it does not affect your five years um you know um routes to your indefinite leave to remain now this person was on the health visa for two years now that she's moving to the skilled to a skilled worker visa job and you know um she's going to be working as a quality information analyst going forward now the fact that she's moving to a skilled worker visa doesn't mean she will need to start counting her five years towards west permanent residence from the beginning she can continue because what is visited on god okay now if you look at god is okay saying that you may be able to apply if you have a work visa now there's no um should i say um uh, specific work visa being mentioned so if you have a work visa you're okay to um, apply for your indefinite leave to remain without having to count the years all over again now you must have lived and worked in the uk for five years but there's an exception if you have a tier one visa it can be two or three years if you have an innovator founder or global talent visa 
it can be three years you may also need to meet the salary or financial requirements this depends on your visa so with a five years route regardless of the work visa you are on you can apply for your indefinite leave to remain as soon as you clock the five years now there's a little bit of um shall i say um a clause in this rule now if you, you if you used to be on the skilled worker visa for example and you decided to switch to a dependent visa the number of years because a dependent visa is not a work visa it's more of a spouse visa so it means that the number of years you spent on your skilled worker visa cannot be counted to, towards a five years route towards permanent settlement in the uk so for example if you spend two years on the skilled worker visa and maybe your partner got a visa sponsorship and one of you decided to like you know switch to the dependent visa so if you who has been on the skilled worker visa for two years decide to move to a dependent visa you will need to start counting your five years all over again from the date you applied for the dependent visa if that makes sense because your dependent visa is not categorized as you know um, a work visa now on the other hand if you get this if you're in a skilled worker visa for example for one year and you for some reason you decided to apply for the global talent visa or the innovator founder visa now the innovator founder visa you only require to be on it for like three years before you can apply for indefinite leave to remain so it means it's really a good thing for you so it means that you don't have to so even if you're not going to count the one year on the skilled worker visa anymore you just need to start counting the three years you will be spending on the global talent visa that you can apply for your uh, indefinite leave to remain however if you're moving from that work visa health and care visa to a skilled worker visa you don't need to start counting all over again you can continue counting your five years um uh, you know route to becoming you know um a permanent resident here in the united kingdom now aside from the five years um route to indefinite leave to remain now there's also the 10 years route to getting your indefinite leave to remain and this is if you've been on um any visa at all uh, of course excluding certain visas um you can you've been on student visa postal work visa work visa you can decide to go through the 10 years route if it's going to be faster to getting your indefinite leave to remain compared to going through the five years route now let me explain i know someone who came into the uk for an undergraduate program so she spent um three years on the um she spent three years on the student visa while she was an undergraduate then she went for another two years master's program uh, which obviously was on the student visa so she was on the student visa for five years before she moved to the uh, post-study work visa so by the time she was finishing up her post-study she was already seven years resident in the united kingdom so of course that doesn't count towards uh, you know any settlement so she needs additional three years for the long to be to leverage on the 10 years long route so what she did was when she got a job so she ended up getting a job as a finance manager with one of the you know uh, one company in london and she was sponsored on the skilled worker visa route so what she did was that instead of having to start counting the five years on the skilled worker visa she added the first three years she was on so this is or she hasn't she's still you know she just got a job a couple of uh, months ago so she's planning that as when she will be applying for the 10 years um for the skilled worker visa uh, skilled worker visa she will be counting the first three years on the skilled worker visa and then add to the seven years she has been in the uk on the student and post-study route so for her now it makes more sense to apply for uh, indefinite leave to remain through the 10 years continuous um you know residence in the uk compared to having to now start you know counting at five years from this year you know before she can apply for the indefinite leave to remain so depending on your situation you definitely need to like make a decision whether you want to go to the 10 years route or the um five years route but there's a clause while on the um 10 years route it's important for you to know that you cannot count the period you are on the seasonal worker visa on a short term study visa or a standard visa visa you can't count that as part of your 10 years route and it's also important to mention that during this 10 years um, qualifying period you must not stay outside the uk for a total of 548 days in total and also eight uh, 184 days in a 12 month period so if you breach any of this you know rules you will need to start counting your 10 years all over again i hope that makes sense if you have any question around 
indefinitely to remain, the requirement, the eligibility, please stick in the comment section and I'll make sure I give response to all questions being asked in this video. And if you're coming across this channel for the first time or you find this video informative, please click on the like button, also click on the red subscribe button to join the amazing growing family and my returning subscribers. Thank you guys for being here. I really do appreciate you guys. So this will be the end of this video and I'll see you guys in my next video. Thank you.